Cause I'm on fire And I can't quench my desire Don't you know that I'm burning up for your love You might convince that that is enough I put myself in this position And I deserve the imposition But you don't even know I'm alive And this pounding in my heart just won't die I'm burning up I'm burning up For your love get enough of that that's a new cover by britney spears called burning up for those of you youngins out there it's originally a hit by madonna from 1983 that was like her breakout hit called burning up so um she remade the song that's cool i like it it's pretty good i mean it's a good song so it's not surprising it's okay i mean it's not great but it's pretty good it's just britney spears but um i liked it it was good so i hope you liked it too Britney Spears' new song, Burning Up. Anyway, I'll play the uh, song again at the end of the show, um, but I wanted to open the show with Burning Up. Anyway, so it's gay mass time. We're talking about what's the latest in the gay news, gay culture, gay music, etc. cetera. And um, if you want to call in during the show, you can call in 214-377-0481, or you can use Skype uh, and call Off Limits Show, and I will be happy to take your call. Uh, to know more about me, you can go to offlimitshow.com, you can go to facebook.com, twitter.com, spreaker.com, and iTunes. So feel free to check me out in any of those places. <clears throat> now, first of all, I wanted to let you know that I am going to be, I currently have a um, Facebook page I've had for a long time that was actually, you know, when you create a new identity on Facebook, you know, it's like a new person. Well, you have to create, you know, a name or whatever. So the Donovan Icon page is uh, my Off Limits show page. It has been for all these years. And um, I've also had a page page, like a fan page for the Off Limits show. And um, I'm going to be getting rid of the um, of the uh, Donovan Icon page completely and just focusing on the fan page. <clears throat> the fan page has almost a 1,000 followers. And it's... Uh, 
Um, I try to keep it pretty active on there, but um, sometimes I fail. But one of the problems I've had is is dividing my attention between the Donovan Icon page and the Off Limits Show page. So I'm trying to focus on just one page. It's a lot easier to do that than to focus on two. And um, in order to, to direct people to my information about my show, I have to have the page. So I'm going to get rid of that. I have, a, of course, I have a personal um, personal Facebook page that I've had for years since like 2004 or whatever. Um, but I don't, ha- you know, so that's my personal one though. So if you know me well enough and you have, you have that already, uh, you can still chat with me that way. Once I get rid of the Donovan icon page, it will, um, you'll no longer be able to chat with me <clears throat> on there. Uh, you know, like a normal chat or whatever, or message me, you'll only be able to, um, post on my Facebook page for off limits show. Um, and that kind of sucks, but it is the way it is. Cause I just, I can't, I can't continue to do two things at once like that anymore. And I might do so many things already. I, I kind of have to focus my attention if I want to keep it going well. Um, <clears throat> but if you do have my personal information, you can always contact me that way also on Facebook. Also, of course, if you don't, you can always tweet me on Twitter. Um, as I said earlier, and also on, um, uh, you can email me info at offlimitshow.com. You can, of course, go to offlimitshow.com as well and find out more about me there, too. So, um, Or contact me there through that site. Uh, and, of course, on Spreaker.com. So what's new in the gay world? Well, last night there was the um, first um, same-sex wedding to take place in the United Kingdom, in, you know, in Britain, Great Britain or whatever. And, uh, you know, they recently passed um, a law where gay marriage was legal all across the country there. Um, they don't have as many hurdles to go over as we do here in America uh, because we the way our government is set up. But fortunately, the first uh, gay wedding took place there. It was recorded and everything. So that's awesome. Um, and um, I think, you know, it's great. And, and soon, apparently, Elton John's going to be finally marrying his longtime partner, David Furnish. Um, they've been together, God, since I think the nineties. So, um, that's awesome. I remember when he did an interview with, uh, Barbara Walters about his relationship with, with David Furnish and, uh, he was still had, you know, he just got his hair transplant. <laughs> if you remember, um, Elton John used to have a receding hairline and he was losing his hair, he was going bald. And then all of a sudden he had all this hair and people thought it was a wig or whatever, but actually it was his hair. He just had a hair transplant. So, um, he still, so that's, he still has that, of course. And so I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I think it looks really good actually. He has, you know, his hair now. I've never seen his actual hairline though. So that's what I, my fear would be if I were to ever have to have a hair transplant it is making it look natural, you know, because the front is the most important thing. And people see, especially on a guy, it's the most obvious place. Cause most of us, most of us wear our hair up. Most guys do up or to the side or something. And sometimes I wear my hair down. It just depends. But, um, you know, it, it, uh, it's hard to hide a bad hair transplant. <laughs> Basically, if you're a guy, if you're a woman, it's easier, I think. Um, and lately a lot of people, a lot of women have been having, losing their hair and stuff more so than, I mean, not more so, but as much as men and because of different conditions. But anyway, uh, as usual, I'm going off track, but, uh, so they, they had the first gay marriage there. That's awesome. And then Sarah Gilbert, speaking of marriages, Sarah Gilbert, if you remember her from the Roseanne show, she played, um, Darlene, uh, just recently married her partner, Linda Perry. And uh, Linda Perry is a well-known lesbian. She has been for a long time. She's older than she is, I think, but she's a well, well-known lesbian, um, um, songstress or whatever writer she's a musician and everything else and so she just got married to her partner and they've been together since 2011 and i think that's great and so you know the great thing is we as a gay community are beginning to um see the um benefit of gay marriage coming uh to the forefront here in america and across the world that's wonderful um, we also had, um, if you remember, um, I think I talked about this the other day. I don't remember if I did or not, but, um, the CEO of, um, Firefox, Mozilla Firefox, you know, the one that makes, um, Firefox, you know, the, the browser, <laughs> he has been making donations and supporting, um, anti-gay, um, issues for a long time, especially during the prop eight era a few years ago. And, uh, it came out that he'd been doing that. And uh, he says that he's not changing his mind. He's against gay marriage, blah, blah, blah. Whereas the entire company 
is pro-gay marriage and pro-equal rights for gay people. And they're saying how they want to, um, you know, oust him because he doesn't really represent the company culture. Uh, and, and so I don't know if that's going to happen or not, what's going to happen. But um, as a result of this, uh, OkCupid okay today, uh, OkCupid okay is a, as a, a dating site. Um, and it has gay people on there as well, gay couples and stuff, uh, matching, I mean. And they actually went as far today to put on their webpage, anybody who uses the Mozilla browser to browse to um, okcupid.com will get this message that comes up. The message is something like, um, if you, you know, we're sorry, but um, we have to stand strong for gay marriage and gay rights and equal rights for everybody. And um, we cannot support a browser that is anti-gay or something like something like that. And so anybody who goes to the site now and is using Netscape or not Netscape used to be called Netscape and Firefox has to now switch to something else to use that site. Um, you know, like Safari or, uh, Chrome or whatever, IE or whatever. So, um, anyway, that's, uh, that's that. Um, so it's great that, you know, it's really rare you find a company that actually supports a, a cause that, um, vigorously that they actually could cause harm to their own business. Because I mean, you think about it, people may actually just browse away and not want to use it, but Generally, they will anyway, but um, and some things. But you know, I think that that's great that a company actually stood up, and especially in this day and age where corporations are so involved in gay rights and um, in every right, women's rights, and in just in politics in general when they really shouldn't be. Where we finally find a company that actually is willing to stand up and actually say no, this is wrong, is amazing. So I was very happy to um, you know to, to, to see that. I think it's it's great. Um, also there is a, there's a story about this, um, girl, she's eight years old, uh, and she goes to a Christian school, of course. <laughs> uh, and she says that, um, that the school says that she looks too much like a boy. And there's actually a picture of her. If you go to like HuffingtonPost.com or something, there's a picture of her there. And in the picture, she does look like a boy. Generally, you look in the eyes, you can tell it's a girl, but mostly it's she. I mean, if you just kind of fleeting glanced at her, you would think it was a boy. And, um, she, she goes to what's called Timberlake Christian school in forest, Virginia. Uh, and the school had sent a letter asking her to either dress and act more feminine or not enroll again because she looked too much like a boy. And their quote was, God has made her female and her dress and behavior need to follow suit with her God-ordained identity. I mean, how important is it that this girl dresses similar to a boy or looks very boyish or whatever? She may be a lesbian. She may grow up to be a lesbian. She may just be a tomboy. She may be... Um, nothing, maybe just be the way she likes to dress and look, who knows, whatever the case may be, she is what she is. Um, and here's what she had to say. The ABC 13 News to Go is brought to you by Bentley Commons at Lynchburg. Well, sports sneakers and short hair, that's what makes eight-year-old Sunny Kayla unique. It's also what had her removed from Timberlake Christian School. Her grandparents pulled the plug on her time after there after they say that she was no longer welcome. New at 11, James Girardi spoke with her family tonight and is live from our Lynchburg newsroom with more. The family received this letter, Danner, telling them that if their eight-year-old granddaughter didn't follow the school's biblical standards, that she'd be refused enrollment next year. Well, she's out and in public school now. Her grandparents telling us shame on the school for attacking their little girl. Papa. Sunny Kale is eight years old. She's got short hair and a huge heart, and as far as her grandparents are concerned, is a completely normal little girl. What else do you like to do at school? Play time. She cries every morning to get on the bus. She cries when she comes home because she wants to go back to Timberlake Christian with her friends. Doris and Carol Thompson are Sonny's grandparents. They adopted and raised the little girl and took her out of Timberlake Christian School when they received this letter from the K-8 principal. You're probably aware that Timberlake Christian School is a religious, Bible-believing institution providing education 
in a distinctly Christian environment. The letter goes on to say that students have been confused about whether Sonny is a boy or a girl and specifies that administrators can refuse enrollment for condoning sexual immorality, practicing a homosexual lifestyle, or alternative gender identity, even referencing specific Bible verses that affirm these beliefs. Quote, we believe that unless Sonny as well as her family clearly understand that God has made her female and her dress and behavior need to follow suit with her God-ordained identity, that TCS is not the best place for her future education. Education. How do you label a child eight years old or discriminate against an eight-year-old child? It just don't happen. Sonny says, I'm a girl. I know I'm a girl. And she said, well, then, you know, you're acting and, and looking and wanting to look and act like a boy. An administrator from Timberlake Christian would not go on camera but told us the problem with Sonny goes, quote, far beyond her hair length, that the little girl is a good student, but that, quote, things disturb the classroom environment. How do you tell a child when she wants to wear pants and shirt and go out and play in the mud and, and so forth? How do you tell her, no, you can't. You've got to wear a, a pink bow in your hair and you've got to let your hair grow out long. How do you do that? I can't do that. School administrators tell us they have not accused Sonny of being anything or anyone and simply asked that her family follow the guidelines they set forth for all students. The Thompsons say they have no plans to re-enroll Sonny at Timberlake Christian. Live in the Lynchburg Newsroom, James Girardi, ABC 13. Anyway, so there's the story. Um, and so I don't know if people, you know, <laughs> the problem I have, of course, with this is obvious. I mean, this woman is, uh, this girl, I mean, is uh, just an eight-year-old girl, and she's just being herself. And what is the message that's being sent to her? It's a message that's being sent to many girls her age, that you aren't good enough, you're not, you don't look the right way, you have to look a certain way to be considered a, an actual female or a woman or girl or whatever. You have to actually look a certain way to be accepted. Accepted. And that is a really bad message to send because it's saying that she's, there's something wrong with her. The fact that she likes to dress the way she dresses and look the way she looks is something wrong with her. Whether or not she ends up being a lesbian or ends up being um, – have a gender identity crisis or something and wants to be a male when she's older or if she's just a tomboy, whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. The fact is the girl is just a fucking girl trying to live her goddamn life. So live the fuck alone, you stupid Christians. <laughs> um, of course, that's what you get when you send your school, your kid to a Christian school. Now, if you send your kid to a private school that has certain rules like this, then you have to abide by them, unfortunately. And that's why if you send them to that kind of a school, you need to see what kind of a a curriculum they have and what kind of a belief system they have in place, because really it's very, um, it's very uh, much in their purview to actually do this. Unfortunately, it's within the rights because they're a private school institution. If they were a public school, it'd be different, but because they're a private one, they have the right to do this. Is it right? No, of course not. Um, but I would never send my kid to a, a Christian school, obviously, or any kind of religious institution at all, um, because I want my kid to think for themselves and not be brainwashed by someone else's belief system. So, um, and you know, whenever I do have kids, I'm certainly going to do that. I'm certainly going to make sure that I do certainly do my best to um, make sure that my kid is a thinker and isn't someone who tries to uh, live up to the expectations of others, but actually tries to, um, you know, live up to their own expectations of whom and what they should be. So I'm going to take a quick break, come back, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the news uh, and wrap up for the day. I'll be right back after this. Be right back.
Okay, so that was pink with Blow Me One Last Kiss. So, um, hold on, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what I was doing here. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, uh, welcome back to the show. Um, someone just complimented me on my new, my new picture. Thank you. It's very highly high airbrushed, by the way. I mean, it's me, but my it's very perfectionally perfectly airbrushed and made to look professional and everything. So I don't look that good in person. Nobody does just FYI, but, um, thank you for the compliments I've been getting on that. I appreciate it. Um, so there's a, I don't know if you heard the story about the woman, um, the prosecutor, uh, a prosecutor, a woman who's prosecuted, I mean, for killing her four-year-old son that she perceived to be gay. Uh, her name is Jessica Dutro. Her son, Zachary died in August, um, after he collapsed at a homeless shelter, where his family was living in uh, Portland, and uh, she had um, she basically was charged with um, killing him from, or murdering him, and um, she said that oh my god her son she said her son was going to be gay she wrote using a slur fag basically called him a faggot said he walks and talks like it uh is what she said. And um, she said she would have to work on him to make him not gay or something like that. So anyway, um, she'd had she'd basically been in charge for inflicting uh, abuse upon him for all this time, and, and ultimately he died of a blunt force trauma to his abdomen, and a delay in medical treatment caused him to die. So um, she is now being charged with murder, murder by abuse, and second degree assault, and I hope she rots in jail. It is always just incredibly, you know, and why is it so much talk? Every time that there is some sort of horrible thing that happens to a gay person, there's almost always a Christian involved. There's almost always someone who who says that they're a Christian and that's why they did it or they don't believe in gay people. So does Christianity really a good thing if it's consistently um, the catalyst for bigotry, hatred, hate crimes, and murder? I don't think so. And depriving people of their equal rights, I don't think so. And if you're a Christian and you're listening to this show, um, then be a good Christian and actually stand up for the rights of everybody and be live up to the rights or live up to the tenets of whatever it is that you believe Jesus Christ said or whatever, which he didn't say anything about being gay or anything that didn't matter. He always talked about was love each other, charity, all that bullshit. So um, if you are a Christian and you're tired of being um deemed evil because of how other Christians treat gay people, black people, Hispanic people, Asians, minorities, women, uh, people who are handy, people of all different types. If you don't like it, then you need to actually change the dialogue that's coming from your side of the fence. It's on you to make those other people in your, your sect, your cult, your religion, whatever, actually understand and change their their the message that they're putting out there because they are speaking not just for themselves but they're speaking for you as a Christian. Not every gay person's the same, not every Christian's the same, not everybody's the same. I know this. But this is the message the preponderance of thing messages that we hear as gay people or people in the world in general about gay people are that they are evil, disgusting, wrong, going to hell and they should be killed or whatever, but the death around the world from Christians. So Christians are often the main reason for this hatred and this bigotry. And to say anything outside of that is wrong. It's not true. It's very, very not true. I mean, it's very, um, it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not true. <laughs> it's a lie, essentially. Because it is what people think about Christians, because that's the message they keep putting out there. So, and, um, you know, I think, you know, you should actually, there's a, a sign that I saw um, that said, uh, I was on a Christian Lutheran church sign I saw on an internet meme. It said, we support the separation of church and hate. And I think that that is the key is that there's one, you know, and that's why I'm not going to go into the whole diatribe about why I can't stand religion because it tells you who to be and blah, 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 and all that bullshit. But it is okay for you to be a Christian and to accept gay people and love gay people and to actually not try to change them and to actually accept them as they are as human beings and just still be a Christian. Just have your own beliefs, but don't try to put them on other people. So 
Anyway, that's what I want to say about that. So as I go out of the show tonight, I'm going to play the original Burning Up by Madonna. At the beginning and the top of the show, I played the new version by Britney Spears, which is very good. But I've got to give reverence to the Queen and the original. Um, so I've got to play the original Burning Up by Madonna on the way out. So I want to thank you for listening to Gay Mass tonight. I hope you guys have a great sh- great night. Thanks for listening to the show. And be sure and go and like my Off Limits show page on Facebook. And be sure to tweet me or follow me on Spreaker.com. If you go to Spreaker.com and go to my Off Limits show page, the main page, there's a follow button under my picture. Click on follow. I'd appreciate that. And if you want to say anything, have a comment, have questions or want advice on something, you can email me at info, I-N-F-O, at offlimitsshow.com. Thanks a lot. Good night.